Scott Myers, he's been a friend of ours for a while. He loves the self storage business. He's very successful in the self storage business. He helps people uh, with an education course that he has. Um, but the most amazing a thing mastermind about him. that he has. That's right. And then uh, at the same time, you can passively invest in a lot of the deals that he has. That's right? right. But what we really want, really want to start because today is chocolate covered chair for charity. Dang. And as greedy and as greedy and as we all are, yeah. <laughs> we also love to give back. That's right. Scott, thank you so much for, for joining us. I Surprise. For, sorry, I forgot. We <laughs> we have a special guest graphic that uh, you guys are fancy. That's all I got to say is you guys are fancy. I have never been introduced well, you know. by a robot before. That is fantastic. <laughs> it's hard to know. Yeah. Do you speak robot, by the way? Uh, well, if it's just a little bit of a uh, beeps and buzzes like uh, that, I suppose I can, but uh, yeah, <laughs> that, that's my limit. <laughs> if you can pull out your old dial up modem. Yeah. That's kind of what it sounded like. <laughs> <laughs> well, good to be here, guys. Uh, and so glad that we're, um, I, I mean, I always love to talk about storage, but um, I, I was thankful that uh, you reached out and said that we could talk about um, some other things like generosity and missions. And um, so, yeah, excited about uh, chatting with you today. Yeah. It, you know, <clears throat> real estate investors get a bad name that we're all greedy and all we're looking for is to, you know, throw throw somebody's mom out of a house if they don't pay. <laughs> um, and people don't understand. A lot, a lot of people do not know about uh, how most most of us really like to give back. Like to give back anywhere we can. Because mm -hmm. <clears throat> making money is fine, but but it's more about uh, a legacy and helping your community and helping the uh, folks around you. Building the kingdom. Um, one of the uh, pleasures that I had was uh, traveling to Mexico with you and your family to help mm -hmm. build houses uh, for folks in Ensenada. And it was, uh, I'm, I'm telling you, it's, it's great to write a check. It makes you, makes you feel good, mm -hmm. but it's, it's a uh, refold hands -on. better, better mm -hmm. there seeing it. And you really appreciate what you have mm -hmm. uh, when you get back. Uh, mm -hmm. I know you're involved in uh, uh, youth with a mission. So if mm -hmm. you don't mind, would you, can uh, you kind of share with our audience what, what goes on and how you're involved? Yeah. So this, um, you know, we, we got involved with, um, with YWAM, with Youth with a Mission, when we went on our first house building trip that was sponsored by someone else. There's a gentleman here in okay. Indianapolis uh, where I live who has a very successful business. And uh, he would take any one of his uh, employees, his staff members, uh, on a short-term mission trip, a four-day mission trip where they would travel to the Dominican Republic or Mexico and uh, in two days build a house and give it to a deserving family. And he would pay for that experience for his employees. Well, um, his kids and our kids went to the same school and he opened it up and offered it to the school, to anybody that wanted to go on this trish mission trip and, and they would pay for it just like he did if we were one of his employees. All we had to do is pay for the plane tickets to get to Dominican Republic. So our kids came home. We're all excited about this and said, um, you know, I mean, what are you going to say when your kids um, come home and say, hey, can we go on a short term mission trip with all our, our, our classmates and one of the classmates dad's paying for it. <laughs> so we went <laughs> and um, we had an incredible experience on um, the same experience that uh, that you shared, Bill. And as a matter of fact, it was exactly the same because um, when we came back from that trip. Yeah. Yeah. As you know, you know, we were changed and and um, you know what? You know, my heart was uh, was crushed for Mexico, and we decided that um, I wanted to do this. And so, you know, it's funny when you you make a commitment, and um, you know, you never want to make a deal with God, but kind of drew a line in the sand and said, um, "Hey, if you bless this, um, I'll do the same." And so, we started tithing and taking ten percent of our profits in our businesses and set them aside into a fund to go build houses. And as soon as we had enough to pay for a team of about twenty people to go down and, and build a house and pay for the house. Then we did it and we went down and built the first one. And uh, amazingly enough, our business uh, began to um, take off after that. And uh, I think it's as a result of our obedience and and um, just continuing that legacy that was um, set forth by the gentleman and the company that um, offered for us to go. And so 
it's now grown into taking that one step further. And now we are building four to five houses a year. And the folks that are going with us are also getting uh, the bug or being tapped on the shoulder or getting a message from God that they are to do the same thing. And some are following in our steps and, and, and building houses with YWAM and bringing their own teams. And others are just really for the maybe for the first time or or maybe for the second or third and finally hit a home being more intentional and mission minded and using their business um as you said wendy to to begin building the kingdom and uh, doing more so and being more mindful and intentional as a result of that so at the end of the day you know we we love building these houses and, and the life change that we see in the families and and what that means to them um, but also and uh, I, I would say maybe an even greater uh, benefit to that or caveat is that, you know, we see that the, the folks that we take, uh, they're doing the same. And so the ripple effect is now affecting and changing, you know, dozens of lives as a result of that. And so we get to see and, and witness and just be a, a vessel for that. And uh, if I could change, you know, the 80, flip the 80-20 and spend 80% of our time on the mission field and taking people down and enjoying this experience and encouraging them to do likewise. And and then the other 20% on emails and, uh, you know, the real estate business, then uh, I'd be a happy camper. And uh, hopefully we'll get there someday. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, selfishly, uh, for me, it, it it's like therapy. When you get mm. back, you know, it's easy to sit in traffic and complain about the person who cut you off. It and, is for him. And then, <laughs> but, but it's you to understand that, hey, and then, hey, I got my, my problems are nothing. This is nothing. Yeah. Uh, we don't I've, have third world This problems. is a first world problem. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, look at look look at what's happening to other other folks. Yeah, and it really does mm -hmm. make you. I, I wish we could take uh, the people that don't think they have enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and tell them that you have way more yeah. than sometimes you deserve. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's um when when the person in front of you in Starbucks is uh yelling at the barista because they're triple half calf latte with soy milk it was you know it has three ounces more milk than they asked for um you really want to pull them inside and just say really you know why don't you why don't i take you on a trip and uh we'll, we'll see how your perspective changes and uh and you're right bill it's it, as often as we go um you know we go twice a year and i've been on 10 trips now and i need that i i need those trips every time because yeah i can get full of myself and i can get um full of the world and get used to and accustomed to um, the, the privilege that we have here in the United States. And, um, so to go there and to be grounded and, and get back to that level of contentment and just saying, yeah, you know, look around, you see all these people in these uh, areas where we serve and they're all happy and regardless of what they have and they don't have much. And, uh, it does, it does put life in perspective. Did, did COVID, did COVID affect your trips the last year and a half? It did. And that's so sad, Wendy. Um, I, 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 I don't know. This is a big deal to us, obviously. Um, and so anytime that uh, when we look at the fact that we couldn't go on these trips, um, but what, what happened in the third world countries that don't have the big safety net um, and, you know, the affluence like the U.S. and, and the Western world, um, you know, there's 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 a lot of people that died um, in, in through 20 and 2021 and not from COVID. They died from starvation, basic right. medicine and just all all the challenges that those countries you know, it's magnified tenfold um, from them being isolated and living paycheck to paycheck when they're in lockdown and they can't go work. They went hungry and they literally did. And so, you know, for for all that and, and you know, the hundreds of other, you know, we can go right on down the list, uh, other, you know, issues that, that occurred in these third world countries. It just, you know, that that absolutely, you know, broke my heart to see that. And so that it, it did affect us. We were the second team to go back into Ensenada, Mexico and build in 2020. And um, this last trip that we uh, that we took right before Thanksgiving, we were the largest trip that went back into Ensenada, Mexico, um, and built uh, three houses and took fifty people with us. And so, I, I don't say that to you know, pat ourselves on the back or anything, but it's just that we 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 realize and and we truly feel that um, you know our business, um, you know, we are we are the hands and the feet, and this is just a vessel, and and God moves money through us to go and serve. And so, to not be able to do that, um, yeah. we were not in a good place last year. So when's your next trip? So next trip is coming up in June and um, we're waiting to hear back from the base and YWAM as to uh, the dates that um, we can build. So we're, we're most likely the second week of June. We we try to allow kids to get out of school because this is a family friendly mission trip that we take. So um, we give them some time so that the kids can go and uh, we'll get a schedule after that. And usually, uh, uh, um, as Bill knows, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday is what we try to schedule these trips for. So um, 
you know, bank on that um, somewhere close to that around the second week of June. So tell us what it looks like. Like where, where do people say when they're down there, you know, mm -hmm. how are they, seeing? what kind of clothes do they need to take? Do they need to bring tools? Yeah. How, what does that look like? Yeah. Um, you don't need to be prepared. We don't need carpenters. We don't need skilled craftsmen um, at, at all. And uh, that's why we took Bill and um, still got the house. <laughs> <done>. <laughs> yeah, these are these are soft office hands. Yeah, I'm in the real estate business, but um, let's face it. Um, it's a good thing we have inch and a half trim. We can cover up, you know, any mismarked, miscut, mismeasured <laughs> wood and <laughs> drywall, thankfully. Um, we just need people that's got a, got a heart for serving um, is all. I mean, we, we start kids as uh, young as six years old uh, and up to when we've had grandparents that are in their 80s that um, sat in a chair and, and really provided encouragement and helped out and painted a little bit when they could. Uh, wow. but we, we have about 20 people that go down and we just bring your work clothes. Um, that's it. Um, clothes that you don't mind getting dirty and painting in and, and the crew takes care of the rest, meaning uh, YWAM. The, the staff is incredible. Um, they organize the entire trip. Uh, my wife, uh, I won't take anything away from her because she does a lot of organizing and, um, you know, hurting the, the cats, uh, all of us to go down there. <laughs> when we get there, YWAM really kind of takes over from there. We show up on the site. We have orientation the day before, and then we show up on the site. All the tools are there. Uh, we show up with a, a slab of concrete, a pile of wood, the generator, and and then the, the YWAM staff, the builders, um, they tell us what to do and measure this, cut this, nail this. And and there's usually a, you know, a handful of us that have been on these uh, before that we can kind of assist and know what to do. Uh, my uh, my 15 year old daughter knows how to build a truss and uh, roof a house now, you know, from memory, she can tell anybody um, how to do that. But we, it, there isn't uh, any any skills necessary or required. Anybody can paint. Anybody can, uh, you know, nail a board. And, uh, you know, there's nothing too dramatically technical about these uh, houses that we built. That's awesome. it, it's funny. I, I, I look through the pictures that we had and you know, speaking mm -hmm. of the um, the kids that live there, live there mm -hmm. that have nothing, nothing, they have nothing. They're still smiling and, and laughing yeah. and having fun. But you were talking about the paint. I think I saw more paint on the people than I saw on any of the wood. <laughs> and every single time uh, that, you know, we, we encourage them to get involved, whatever they want to do. But then, uh, yeah, as soon as those kids come over, I mean, they don't have too many changes of clothes. They don't have too many clothes period. And um, so when they start helping out, they never change. They just start uh, painting them whatever they get on. And it's pretty much ruined by the time they're done, <laughs> but they're not shy. And, and then it usually at some point it becomes a game uh, with the, the other kids that we bring down as well. And, uh, you know, that's ministry too. We're, we're, it's just good work that, uh, that our kids are doing with, uh, with those kids and, um, everybody walks away with just, um, an incredible positive experience. That's awesome. Well, listen, I ready for another trip. I, yeah. I already talked to Scott awesome. about uh, mm -hmm. going on, uh, next November. Um, what was I going to, was I going to say? I don't remember. Okay. So uh, th <laughs> thank you for sharing uh, about why we am. My pleasure. I, he shared. Um, and there, there's a couple of websites there in the chat uh, to check out uh, who YWAM is and some of the other stuff mm -hmm. that they do. They have, uh, I, I know they have uh, schools that they've set up all over the mm -hmm. United States as well. Mm -hmm. uh, people that want to get their uh, degrees and, and even I, I think they have uh, high school stuff too as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah, they really do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. They're pretty um, incredible uh, organization. <laughs> Yeah, that it, it really is. It really is an awesome organization. Let, let's talk about your business. Uh, first of all, as I teased in the beginning, uh, um, you are the uh, self storage guru. Yeah. Uh, you do. Daddy. You do teach uh, courses, and you have a mastermind. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, we, um, you know, that, that came out of our investing company, um, because in the beginning I was in uh, houses and apartments. Um, when I began to, when I was, grew tired of tenants and toilets, um, looking to get into something else that didn't involve tenants and toilets in real estate. And well, that really left like a part or it, it left self-storage and parking lots. That was it. Well, it came to <laughs> a lot of value in parking lots. And so I began looking into storage and there really wasn't anybody to you know kind of assist in that. There wasn't a guru. There wasn't anybody teaching um, that. And so, you know, we, we learned um, by School of Hard Knocks and um, paying consultants and, and other mentors and just going to the trade shows and talking to anybody and everybody I could. And so once I got into the business, um, it, it just kind of happened organically. And I used to run the Real Estate Investor Association here in Indianapolis and started holding some workshops and 
um, one of the national, uh, the agents for the national speakers um, found out about um, me and what we were doing and said, hey, why don't you put together, you know, a course and I'll put you out on the road. And I said, well, that sounds great because I write the checks to those people that go out on the road um, and teach about other things <laughs> in our real estate investment group. And um, but little, little did I know, um, you know, what that would entail and, and how it took off. Um, so, yeah, there were people that were interested in it. And so before I knew it, we had a, a 60 hour uh, a week yeah. business in the education side, as well as my investing business. So we've uh, we've curtailed that and, and, and pulled that back these days and, and blended the two companies between my investment company and our education company as well. And, yeah, we've been doing it for 15 years and we were the first. We're still the, the largest and uh, we've um, taught and mentored more people and got them into the business and taught them how to grow and scale their business and anybody else out there. And uh, that's a credit to my team, not just uh, me, but. Um, you know, like any entrepreneur, I suppose you, you looked uh, across the land, if there's something that you need in your business and you can't find it and then you create it. And that's, that's really what we did. And, um, God has blessed that uh, very well and allowed us to, um, change the lives of many, many investors who, um, also followed that same path and didn't like the tenant toilet business and wanted to get into self-storage. And we allowed that to happen for them. So you have a, you, you have a fund that people can invest in for mm -hmm. your, correct. Story. is that correct? How, how mm -hmm. many self storage units do you have at this point or I should call them stores right yeah stores or facilities uh, interchangeable we're um we're selling eight this year and we're buying a whole bunch more we're right at that 40 mark we kind of hover right around there um wow. we've been as high as 45 facilities we're back down to like 41 right now um but getting ready to close on another one at the end of this uh, month but also probably selling another one at the end of this month as uh, as well so, uh, yeah, the goal next year is, um, you know, look at larger opportunities, doing fewer deals, but larger opportunities and putting them into our fund. We still do. We syndicate and do private equity projects on um, single asset, single entity um, facilities uh, by way of a capital raise. But then we also do have a fund, which we're putting a lot of uh, value add facilities, um, class C, smaller facilities, value add where we can create value and either sell or roll up into a portfolio and sell off. That is the goal of our, our, our self-storage growth fund. Now, does that fund fund it fund have an end date to it, or is it more it of does. an F fund? Okay. Yeah, this is a this is a five year fund that we've um, set, and um, I think before long we're uh, um, probably quicker than we assumed. We were going to be starting our second fund as well, and that uh, may look a little bit different than a growth fund uh, as well. But uh, you know, we we acquire existing facilities, turn around value adds, we develop from the ground up, we convert facilities as well. So we do all things. And so as we look at our next fund, um, you know, we may look at things just a little bit differently, but um, yeah, it is. Uh, this one is close ended, uh, ends in uh, five years. And then, uh, but in the meantime, we'll definitely be starting number two and perhaps another one after that. Are there certain parts of the country that you <laughs> like better than others at this point? Yeah, the warm ones. Yeah. <laughs> I get to go visit the sites. <laughs> Um, yeah. all, all that said, yeah, that's, I mean, we, we've seen the migration, you know, we, we know the states where everybody's going to, um, partly, um, for political reasons, but then also always in many of those states, uh, because of uh, the weather, I mean, uh, the, the coast, um, now minus California, everybody's going the opposite direction out of there, but, uh, we like Texas, um, a lot. We like Florida a lot. We certainly like the Carolinas, um, and, um, buying and selling very actively down there. Um, as well. Tennessee has also been a hotbed for us, um, but still do own facilities um, up in Michigan, where I uh, used to be from and here in the Midwest. So, although funny thing is, you know, we've got these roughly 40 plus facilities and we've got 15,000 doors all across the country. And guys, I don't have one wow. facility or one unit in my home state. I, if I wanted to store something in one of my facilities, I'd have to fly it fly my stuff somewhere to do so. <laughs> so we don't have anything around here right now, which is odd, but um, Phoenix, Arizona you know, and uh, all, all the more. You can always rent. <laughs> you can always rent somebody else. <laughs> I, I, I love the word rent, but not, not when I'm on the receiving end of it. Or <laughs> I the giving end of it. How's that? <laughs> so good, th thanks for that tip, Bill, but that, that ain't me. We own it. <laughs> um, I have a self storage unit unit that I've I've been renting now my intent my intention months uh just to store some to store some from rehabbing and my mm -hmm. Airbnb leftovers. And mm -hmm. now now I'm a year into it. They've been raising my rent every three months mm -hmm. like clockwork. Yeah. I'm I'm you know, where am I gonna go? And mm -hmm. when I was uh putting in the contract for this, you know, renting the unit in the first place, there was a woman that was in there that had been renting at the same place for 17 years, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, 17 mm -hmm. years. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, Wendy, um, you, you are, you're not typical. You are exceptional. So don't take this the wrong way, but you are our typical customer who says, well, I'm going to rent this for a few months or 10 months. And then they find themselves a year, two years, 17 years later, you know, realizing uh, the benefit of this. So on behalf of the industry, I thank you and uh, your friend who's been uh, there for 17 years. Tell me other suckers. <laughs> Awesome. It's a useful service we provide, Wendy. It is. <laughs> it is. No so, doubt. <laughs> uh, based, uh, based on the price of land and uh, mm -hmm. other issues that we're having right now, are you finding uh, more value value add opportunities or, or more uh, ground up construction type mm -hmm. stuff? Yeah, you know, everything goes in cycles, Bill. And and we saw what happened in the last cycle, meaning uh, the recession of uh, 08, 09. And I wish I, I had more cash or access to private equity, as I'm, I'm sure you and everybody else did uh, when we came out of the, you know, the back end of that uh, sure. with all the opportunities out there. And so we, we moved through that cycle as well. And so we're kind of gearing up for that again. There's a lot of folks, uh, mom and pops that just aren't keeping up with their facilities. And we know that there's going to be, when it comes time to refi, they won't have built enough value. And, and when they have to refi at a lower LTV and a higher rate, we're going to be buying up some of those facilities. Um, in the meantime, the self storage has been so hot since 08 that we've been developing. Um, so we, you know, finding good land in good spots, rental rates have been going up, you know, like other asset classes, you know, and really up until the past sales has started to go up dramatically. We've been building, uh, just been on a tear for the past um, two and a half years. So now we've we've taken um, a little step back, um, you know, and have to look at, uh, we looked at the existing projects we had in the pipeline. And uh, one of them, we hit the pause button on, it got too expensive. The others, we value engineered them and still move forward. Uh, but now the the pendulum has gone back to buying more of the value add facilities um, along with development. We're still looking at development opportunities. It's just a little costly to build from the ground up right now. So looking uh, and shifting gears more towards existing facilities has been our focus. And, and that's you know, the past five facilities that we've purchased in the last two months have been all existing. Yeah, there's still opportunities for opportunities for reap other <laughs> properties into self storage as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Kind of help, help hold this on the ground up. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, you take what the market's giving you. <laughs> That's it. Just give me the rule book and uh, we'll figure out how to make it work and make money. That's right. <laughs> um, That's do, right. do me a favor, Sharib. Could you pull up uh, Scott's uh, URL again? So when you go to um, the self storage URL, you have access to, well, that, well, that, there, that's the why way. Let's go to the self self storage uh, URL. When, when you go to that one, can you get um, opportunities to invest in some of your um, offerings as well as uh, getting the education? We do. Yep. That's all things uh, self storage and everything that we do is laid out there. You know, uh, all the resources, uh, even some free ones to learn you on how to invest in self storage, whether you're going to do it uh, passively or actively. And then obviously, if you want to do a deeper dive on the active side, we have a full suite of resources to teach you about the business. And then there's a, a link and a tab to uh, the passive side of our, our house, if you will, that shows the opportunities that we have available now, as well as a, a history. You can see just exactly how we do it. And we show the returns that we've given to our investors um, as we've exited on the back end for them. And uh, just a, you know, a good understanding of, you know, what it looks like our business model and the types of facilities that we invest in. Sure. And see, that's awesome because yeah. if you're a potential passive investor, you have, you have the, <laughs> understand the industry mm -hmm. before you ever get into it. If, if you want to, if you want to go, uh, it, it's there because a, as we all know, there are different levels of, of past investors. Some of them are a little, mm -hmm. want to be a little, a little more active than others. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. gives, them a, gives them a good idea what they're getting into. Um, and then become a little more passive than, than active. Right. Exactly. Do you have, yep. have a 1031 option into any of your, your fund. Or we do. We do. We have the uh, the do? option that we can accept those funds uh, as well. Um, the challenge on the syndication piece, however, is that, as you know, um, everybody, all the investors would have to go forward to the next one. Otherwise, they you know, they would lose that tax benefit. Um, it would end with us on that project. Um, but right. we do accept funds um, 1031 into our fund. And, and there's also ways of you know, structuring with um, tenants in common and a couple other ways that uh, even folks with 1031, they don't get dinged on the back end of our syndications as well. Um, but that's a conversation we can have uh, with your CPA and ours as to um, how to structure that so that uh, you wouldn't lose that tax benefit. 
Awesome. I've got to fill up, fill up my form Friday. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's a lot of those conversations we've been having recently, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, by the way, thank you so much for joining us awesome. and sharing oh, pleasure, uh, both uh, YOM and, and your business and business model. Uh, you've mm -hmm. been doing a great job in both, and we really mm -hmm. appreciate you, you sharing with others. Thank you. Folks, well, Bill, we appreciated having you along and appreciate being here as well. And uh, Wendy, we'll get you on the next one or one of these trips. That sounds good. That sounds good. I'm up. Excellent. Thank you, folks, for folks for just on the what is the name of what is the name of our passive the aggressive passive accredited <laughs> investor show. You know, one of our folks called it the passive aggressive show. Passive aggressive show, and it stays <laughs> on my lips all the time now. It's the worst thing you could have done. Yeah, we are Carolina Capital Management. We're <laughs> lenders in the southeast for real estate investors. If you're interested in borrowing money, go to CarolinaHardMoney.com and click on the apply now tab. If you are, are an investor looking for passive return returns, click on the invent a credit, a credit tab. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell and then sign up with Wednesdays with Wendy. Yeah. No crazy. Robot. There's no show next week because we will be celebrating Christmas. That's right. And, but we'll see you in January. That's right. Oh no, right before January. Two weeks we'll be yeah. out. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. <laughs>